Dragon Slayer Media presents Rich Gaspari and John Romano in Fitness, Fame, and Fortune. On Fitness, Fame, and Fortune this week, we're going to talk about uh, the Olympia and how the latest spike in COVID cases and uh, further, I'll call it hysteria regarding the virus has caused uh, a number of problems with renewed lockdowns and renewed restrictions in an effort to fight this thing, or in at least attempt to, which has affected us, Rich, in our industry with respect to the zenith of our sport, the Olympia, the, the, um, the Super Bowl of bodybuilding, the Mr. Olympia, the Olympia weekend, actually, it's, it's uh, all encompassing uh, as far as every aspect of our sport, usually held in Vegas, is now being held in uh, Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Um, I know that states like Nevada and California, uh, well, even in my state, New Jersey, New York, uh, the restrictions to run events are very, very, very strict. And, you know, as we discussed with Dan, that if they would have had this show, it would have been a big disappointment to many, many people, uh, including just the uh, wives and girlfriends of the competitors themselves that wouldn't be able to go see the show, you know, VIP seats. And, you know, they moved it to Florida at the last minute you know, timing, which I give them kudos. Um, very difficult with this type of show to run something so last minute and have them, you know, in four weeks time, pull this through. But they're, you know, what I said is you do have Jake Wood, who is um, since Joe Weider, very passionate about, you know, the sport of bodybuilding. And he's, he's doing it. Even if they, this year they lose money, they're going to make sure that this show, you know, goes on and the event goes on and, you know, it is a great event. There's a lot of different categories in this show be, between the Mr. Olympia, you know, having, you know, Phil Heath trying to get his Olympia title back um, to, you know, the two, the two twelve, uh, women's bikini, women's wellness, women's bodybuilding. The Miss um, Olympia, right? The, yeah, Olympia the women's back. bodybuilding, which, you know, it's, 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 um, what I'm saying now, there's a lot of women's divisions because you have women's bodybuilding, you have women's physique, you have women's wellness, you have women's bikini, you have women's, uh, fitness, right? Yeah. And what else? What else? Is there, I'm, sure, I'm sure we thought about women's, it. women's figure. That's six. Women's figure, figure. Yeah. That's yeah. six. That's six categories. That's Just crazy. in the women's division. <laughs> now, and contrast that with when you competed in the Mr. Olympia. What what else was there? The Miss Olympia. And that wasn't That's, even in the same show. It was a different no. show. But, Yeah, no, it wasn't. I don't think it no, it wasn't in the same show. It was in a no. different it was in a different venue. They had it always at a different place. Right. Wayne D'Amelia promoted it in a complete it was always in New York, in either the Felt Forum or the or the uh um where the night of champions used to be. Um, see, I mean, it was, it was, it, or no, no, it was that hotel near, near um, Times Square. But um, yeah, it was a standalone event. Now you've got, now you've got this conglomeration of, of, of six, seven women's events. You got the men's, um, you know, open bodybuilding, 212 bodybuilding. You've got men, classic physique. You've got it's a men board chore, the men's whatever you want to call it. <laughs> what I call it. it. <laughs> Men, men's men's physique. Well, then I mean you have you have you have you have cl you have bodybuilding, classic physique, men's physique. I think that's it, right? There's three categories and the two twelve. Oh, and the two twelve. That's four right. categories. Right, right. So and and so you yeah, get over ten categories between men and women. It's a giant ten. show. Now look at the look at the logistics of this. You're a businessman. This is Jake Wood's first rodeo at, at the Olympia. Okay, mm -hmm. your first year in. This is your challenge. The first time you do this thing, he's guaranteed. He's probably. He's, I can't imagine him not losing. You know, seven figures in, in in all of this thing, and 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 he knows it. He knows it going in, and he refused to drop the prize money. 
He reviewed, refused to change any of the aspects that benefited the athlete or the attendee in spite of having to deal with incredible restrictions and incredible challenges. And like you said during the show, if this was David Pecker, they would have just canceled it. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to sound that like that, but he's – he didn't have a love for the show. It was more about money and, you know, it was all a business decision. Sometimes, you know, what you do, and I mean, you know, Dan, you know, gave me kudos to say, you know, that I keep moving, I keep moving forward and I keep doing what I do is because I have this love and passion for what I do. Um, it's not always about the money. It's about being able to, you know, being able to still say I can do it. You know, someone will tell me that, oh, Rich has, you know, reached his peak, you know, <laughs> Rich is too old, all these different things that, you know, you know, I want to show is false, you know, with, with this show moving on, you know, they can say that, oh, this show is going to be done, you know, let's just cancel it and let's have it next year. Right. And, you know, all these poor athletes that have prepared for this show. I mean, I remember, you know, how important it was for me to get ready for the Olympia, it was so important. So I can only imagine if last minute a competitor was told, you know what, we're not having the show this year. Well, and even even though they are having it, to have it in a venue on the other side of the country, yeah, less than four weeks. Yeah, you know, it, this is not like uh, we're, we've decided to do this in June. This is we're in the home stretch here. We got people, competitors in the you know the final phases of their prep going into this show and uh, you know, now we're changing the venue. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure all of this presents challenges and it's really incredible that it's going on, that we're going to have three Mr. Olympias competing at the same time for yes. this, for this show, for this title again. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't, I, and like you said, this is going to be probably one of the best Mr. Olympias of, of all time. Oh, you, you, he just said some of the guys that are in there, you know, um, I know one of your favorites is, um, uh, I, I like them, you know, I, I like, I like all of them really. I have, I have favorites based on what, you know, body parts and conditioning, you know, I kind of like, I'm, I'm like you, I'm a conditioning guy. That's, that's well, I'm we glad to see Hani Chopin in the show again this year, because <laughs> I know last year he had a special invite. I wasn't <laughs> sure, you know, being from Iran that he would again be able to come in and he was able to come into this show again. Um, he is, when it comes to conditioning, he is in, you know, the conditioning athlete more than any of the other competitors. So it's cool to see him in the show um, who came third last year. So I mean, you got a really great, you got a really great lineup, yep. you know, and, and this show is about business, you know, seeing the difficulties that surround this show you know, from being where it was all hands on deck to be in <clears throat> Vegas at, I guess, Planet Hollywood. Right. It was going to be at Planet Hollywood, which was going to mm -hmm. be a really nice venue, and they're going to have a really great show. And then last minute, okay, let's move it to Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> the, good so, news is, the good news is, though, it's still going to be an all-in-one-place, you know, encompassing. That's going to be very cool. That's going to be really good. It's at the Hyatt, <laughs> which is a really nice uh, hotel at the Orange County Convention Center. Um, it's a beautiful venue. It's very modern. It's well put together. It's centrally located, easy to get to. Um, so, you know, I, I, you can't say enough about that. But logistically for Dan and, and Jake Wood and company, I mean, they have a Herculean amount of work to do in the next, you know, three to four weeks to get – all of the logistic elements of this thing put together and operating in a way that they're going to, you know, run smoothly on top of the added difficulty of having to deal with all of these safety regulations for the, for the virus issue. Yeah. So um, I guess we've let the cat out of the bag. Our guest this week is Dan Solomon, president of the, of the Olympia. And he's going to be, uh, we're we're gonna be asking him all of the tough questions about what he's got to deal with and on on doing this, how it made the how he made the decision and what's at stake if things go wrong. And uh, as a biz as as another fellow businessman, Rich, would you be wanting to trade places with with Dan at, the, at this point? Right, right at this point. No, I mean I, I'm gonna give I I do give him kudos that 
you know, I've been through some difficulties where, you know, I was told to quit and I just kept going. And he's, he's through the same challenges right now uh, to continue running this show. And, and they're, you know, they're troopers, they're running this show and they're moving forward, which is, is great to see, you know, and this has nothing to do more about money, more than passion is what I'm saying when it comes to, you know, someone's love and passion, it supersedes the money part. And whatever happens this year, I know that the following years that they'll be making it up tenfold. I agree with you. I think this is this is one of those acts of goodwill that's not going to go on, that's not going to go forgotten. And uh, when the Olympia rolls around next year, when things are normal and everything's good, um, you're going to see, I think, a, a tremendous amount of support to kind of say thank you to to Jake and to Dan for all of the, all they did to make sure that this year went on. Um, irrespective of, of the problems and the challenges around us, which are huge. Mm. I don't mean to downplay this by any means. This is, this is the real deal, man. And, and, and to pull this out of the hat now is just really incredible. Definitely. So you know, I hope you're going to enjoy this episode of fitness, fame and fortune. Our guest, Dan Solomon, president of the Olympia is going to give us all the info you're going to need to know. Make sure if you're watching us on YouTube that you like us and uh, give us a comment. Tell us who you'd like to see on the show. If you're listening to us on any of the other podcast platforms, be it Apple, Google, Alexa, what, what have you, please give us some comments, give us some five-star ratings and help us support this show so we can keep bringing you the kind of news and information that help you in your pursuit of the business of fitness. So, so Dan, it's been, a, it's absolutely amazing that um, we're here talking to you virtually the day after you moved the Olympia from Vegas to Orlando. You are in fact sitting in the very hotel right now where the Olympia will be um, in four weeks, less than four weeks. Yeah. So, so I'm here in the I'm here in the Hyatt Regency Orlando, which of course is going to be the host hotel of the 2020 Olympia, uh, attached to the Orange County Convention Center, one of the nicest convention centers I've ever seen. And we're going to be having the Olympia here. Before we talk about the Olympia, though, since we are talking, John, you and I haven't spoken a lot lately. Let's get to the Olympia in a second, because all I've been doing is talking about the Olympia lately, and I know you guys want to hear about it. We'll get into it. But I want to tell you something, John. And by the way, Rich. Always an honor to be with you, man. You are the absolute gold standard as to what we all try to aspire to be in this industry and trying to raise the bar in terms of on the business side, how we engage with fans and how we develop commerce and, and, and all that stuff and try to bring value to people. So um, I just can't say enough about, about what you've meant to so many of us. Um, but John, you know, you are one of the reasons why I fell in love with what we do. I'll be honest with you. And I have to tell you this before we start because – I remember the days when we'd all run to, remember you'd run to Barnes and Noble or Borders bookstores and they'd have that little section in the back where they'd have all of our fitness and bodybuilding magazines. And yeah. I used to run over there and um, I'd open up MD and you had that column called Romano's Rant. And <laughs> the, rage, the rage page. The rage page, yeah. And it was such a great thing because it, 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 it really, it was such an opinion rich, um, envelope pushing, edgy uh, opinion. And the reason why I can tell you you're so good at what you do is because I almost never agreed with any opinion you ever had. <laughs> however, however, um, it didn't make me love reading it any less. And it didn't make you any less one of my favorite bodybuilding writers of all time. And it makes me think about today's generation where everybody just consumes information based on what they agree with. If you're Republican, you follow Republican writers. If you're a liberal, you follow liberal writers. If you are this, you that's what we do. And I think back to you and I always said, you know, there was a time when you could read stuff and follow um, writing or, or radio shows or whatever from people who you didn't agree with, but you still enjoyed the perspective. You still enjoyed the viewpoint. And um, I wish we could get back to that because I think there would be far less division and disconnect if the world would get to it to a place where you could sit there and you could hear an opposing view and find value in it and find entertainment in it. Nobody does that anymore. And that's why we're drifting further and further apart. And I know this isn't a political show, so we're not going to talk about that, but I just want you to know that every time I think about my um, connection to you and your writing and your opinions, I always think back to, to that <laughs> and in terms of how far we've kind of drifted from that place. 
Well, that, that's very flattering, especially coming from you. So that's I uh, I appreciate. You know, I, I remember back when we started this whole thing, we were just talking about the you know calling into Voice America and getting our podcasts out, and and you know you were very gracious in the beginning. You had you had me on as a guest, I think three times on on Pro Bodybuilding Weekly, and I was ostensibly the competition. So um, I, I thought that was that was pretty cool. We did we did disagree a lot, but we did have. It was never ad hominem. We never disliked the person. It was always the message that may have been, you know, d d not agreed upon. But look, the bottom line is it's all those years later and we're still here. <laughs> still, still grinding, man. Still doing it. Still and, uh, we, we did it. something right. Yeah. So, okay. So th that out of the way, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's go back to talking about your favorite subject only because, look, <laughs> I, I feel really flattered that we're probably one of the first news organizations or, or the first. You're the first. we're the first to get you on the show post this decision. I feel really honored that you, you know, reached out, reached out in that regard. So uh, let's go back to the problems you were having in Vegas and let's let's move. You know, this is a show about business. So this is a this you don't get more business than what you just had to go through. So, so for the last several months, um, we have been working tirelessly to execute this Vegas event. And um, we had a great deal in place with Planet Hollywood, which enabled us to bring the event right to the Las Vegas Strip in a first class, beautiful, um, beautiful venue. And they were really um, supportive of us. And uh, inside the Planet Hollywood is the Zappos Theater. And the Zappos Theater is one of the top entertainment venues in all of Vegas. And um, we had a tremendous weekend built. And we also had some assurances from very high level people about where the state of the world was heading in Las Vegas as it related to the quarantine. And um, we felt pretty good that come December, we would be able to execute a very successful weekend with certain limitations, of course. Um, but in the last few weeks, that narrative shifted pretty dramatically as the governor of Nevada came out and started talking about another 14 day um, stay at home order. And a, a myriad of things were coming up that were making us realize that there was just no way this was going to go the way we had hoped. And we were really committed to staying in Vegas, though. We really wanted to see that happen. We know the fans enjoy going to Vegas. It's a destination on the calendar for everybody. So we really, you know, Jake, uh, Jake Wood, our owner, and uh, our team, we were really committed to trying to make that work. And we really held out as long as possible in hopes that that would, that would go to plan. And then it was becoming more and more obvious that um, our crowd size, based on the current regulations and where they were headed, was going to be infinitesimally small. We were talking like a couple hundred people in a theater that holds almost 8,000. We were talking about a scenario where we were going to have to notify, you know, a thousand VIPs and tell them not to come or um, ticket master holders and tell them that they're not going to be able to come or the spouses of competitors. Imagine having to pick up the phone and call Phil Heath's girlfriend or Dexter Jackson's wife and say, hey guys, you can't come and watch um, the competition. And we were quickly headed in that direction where we were going to basically have to put on this show um, headlined by one of the best lineups, you know, we've had since, uh, you know, Rich was competing against Lee. And it's a really special lineup. And we did not want to um, have that event in um, take place in front of no audience. It just it seemed um, it just seemed like a real tough pill to swallow. And um, it got to a point where it was becoming evident that that was a real possibility that fans weren't going to be allowed to come, athletes were going to compete in front of nobody, and um, it's just something that we weren't going to do. And we really felt strongly that, you know, look, the NBA had its finals, the Major League Baseball had their World Series, and the Olympia is our Super Bowl. And we felt a real responsibility. This is not just any other event. The Olympia represents um, a lot to the history of what we do, to the economy of what we do. It impacts – brands, it impacts companies, it impacts athletes. It, it's the story of our sport. So when we produce the Olympia, it's not as simple as just saying, yeah, we're going to cancel the event or um, we'll, we'll do it next year. We, we really feel the responsibility to make sure these athletes have a chance to compete for you know, well over a million dollars in prize money and the prestige that comes with these titles. So we were really committed to making it happen. And about a week ago, we got another round of information that made it clear as day that this was going to be a real high risk exposure on many levels. Um, even the space itself wasn't as safety um, um, considerate as 
um, as it needed to be. There was just a whole lot of things going on that was making us realize that we were we were we were playing with fire. And the thought of having to call up an athlete who's been prepping for the competition for three months and telling them the event's been canceled was something that I certainly couldn't have lived with. So um, we identified an opportunity in Orlando, Florida, um, and uh, we we reached out to the Orange County Convention Center, and um, the space in the convention center gives way to opportunities. Everything when it comes to safety protocol is tied to space and square footage and open areas, and uh, that's hard to come by, and we, and we found it here. So with that in mind, um, we were able to complete a deal where we could move the event to Orlando in a highly unconventional move with four weeks to go. We'd have to put an event on in four weeks that typically we spend seven months producing and preparing for from, from the staging to the marketing and the promotion and travel arrangements and licensing and all the various things that come into one of these events. We have to basically do it in four weeks instead of seven months. Um, but we thought about it and we said, you know what? Four weeks is still four weeks. It's still, it's not a lot of time, but it's enough time to, to turn this thing around. So we, 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 we dug in, we headed here to Orlando, which is where I'm at right now. We walked the site and um, we were able to identify great locations to put on our amateur Olympia event, to put on our press conference, our meet the Olympians events, our prejudging, our finals, some opportunities for our newly created sponsor pavilion. And it all fits beautifully in the convention center and in the hotel. And um, we, uh, we feel like we uh, pulled a rabbit out of a hat and um, we're very grateful to the support we've gotten here from the people here in Orlando. The city is very welcoming and excited to have us. Um, we're still committed to doing everything we can safety wise, but uh, that's, um, that's basically the long winded short version of how we got here. I mean, I, that's an amazing, that's just amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, I, I mean, a guy like you, has the same passion in the sport that, you know, that I have or John's had, but I, I really think having the new owner, uh, Jake, um, if this was unfortunately by David Peckery, probably would have just canceled the show. That's my thinking. Well, I'll add this. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned Jake because he deserves a lot of mention. We're going to give away, think about this for a second. We're going to give away more prize money. That has ever given that has ever been given away at a fitness or bodybuilding competition in the history of the world. Um, last year we established a record north of 1.4 million dollars. This year we're added the Miss Olympia division, which inherently brings more prize money, and we're doing that in a year where we have significantly less exhibitors, significantly less tickets that we're able to sell. Um, this is not a sound financial model here in 2020 because of the realities of the world and people's inability to, to travel and all the things that come with it. And the venue still has to limit by percentage the number of capacity that we can have. And in spite of all of that, Jake is not only putting on the contest, but he's given away full prize money. And it would have been perfectly reasonable for Jake if he had wanted to, to cut the prize money in half and said, you know what, we can't do this without making a significant prize money cut. But he never did it. He said, I want to I don't want these athletes to pay the price for what's going on. I want to make sure they have every opportunity and, um, and he's doing it. So if, if that doesn't say everything you need to know about Jake's commitment to the athletes and to this sport, um, I don't know what does because uh, uh, I even said to him, I always try to find ways for Jake to, you know, save money when he can and all that. Cause that's part of what I do. Um, and I told him flat out, I said, Jake, nobody would fault you if you wanted to reduce prize money um, to make this a viable situation. And he said, absolutely not. We're going full bore on the, uh, on the prize money. And um, yeah. I, uh, I was so grateful, and I think everybody else uh, is as well. So he's, he's going into this knowing he's going to lose <laughs> a couple million bucks, basically? Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say. There's a lot of variables. We are doing a pay-per-view, and the pay-per-view we anticipate being um, successful. Obviously, there's fans around the world, who many of whom normally would come to the Olympia, um, and we're doing a next level pay-per-view experience. It's not going to be just the kind of thing we've done in the past with basic webcasting. We're taking it up a few levels. So um, we anticipate the pay-per-view being an opportunity to try to uh, almost serve as a bit of a band-aid for a lot of that revenue that we're not going to get from, you know, sponsors and exhibitors and ticket sales. But um, yeah, so it's hard to know how that's going to play right now. 
But, um, you know, we're certainly doing everything we can to, to make sure Jake has every opportunity to enjoy as much success with this as possible. This is his first year. And um, I guess you could say he caught a bad break, but uh, he's a, uh, he's a unique guy. He uh, usually when you work for somebody like I do, like I, like you mentioned, David um, and other folks that we've all worked for, you work for, for Steve and o- other guys. Um, usually the boss is the guy who adds the stress, right? Um, as you can tell by the panicked way in which I'm even speaking now, because my motor is running so fast right now, it's beyond belief. Um, and Jake, who is my boss, um, is the guy who keeps me calm, which is quite a turn of events, right? Because it usually doesn't go that way. Usually it's the other way around. Yeah, I, exactly. It is. <laughs> what are you trying to say about Rich? <laughs> Sometimes I stress yeah. out of <laughs> Two times in my entire life, I've made him do something at the last minute, and it didn't turn out well. <laughs> well, you well, know, you've worked, well, you've worked for um, you worked for um, for Jack over at VPX. You worked for. Hey, Steve I'm better Lechman. than Jack. I'm better than Jack. <laughs> you worked for Steve Leckman. You've worked for Rich. So you've worked with some real personalities over the years, uh, and, and, and and other ones you don't know about. But right, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> but no, no. Look, it's it's what this what a lot of the problems that we face doing any of this stuff technologically is that you know we're old men. And, and, you know, we're not hip to the newest, coolest ways of doing things, no matter how hard we try. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. And, and, you know, we deal with it um, in every aspect from marketing to promotion to sales to everything now that we're doing, you know, basically in the digital realm is, is a different animal. And it takes, it, it takes a lot of learning new stuff. I mean, just going with this podcast from, from pure audio, you know, radio to now having the video option, as seemingly simple as that may sound, has been a quantum leap in difficulty mm-hmm. by getting continuity and contiguous image and sound quality and backgrounds and and editing work. I mean, it's it's a it's a whole entirely new skill set to learn, uh, you know, in a in the modern age. So it's it's uh, well, kind of hits the bumps. You know? That's why it's a team sport. I mean, I know I'm fortunate to have guys like, you know, Tamer Elgindi, who uh, works as a producer of the event, and uh, Angelica, who is our event coordinator. And then I get to collaborate with all sorts of smart people and folks who understand everything from from staging to, um, you know, the, the the back end of what we do. And and as you know, I, I keep close tabs with guys like, you know, Bob Ciccarello is one of my really close friends, and we're always throwing ideas around and and, um, you know, we have a very close knit group and um, it, it, I couldn't do it without these guys. It's really um, important that uh, you surround yourselves with the right people. And uh, I've always felt that's the key to longevity and success. But uh, you are right. There's a, even when you guys sent me over the link to log into this thing, it took me a half an hour to log in. So. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. Hey, it's a, hey, I have the same problem. So don't worry about it, Dan. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You know, so this, this this is a very exciting Mr. Olympia, I have to say. I mean, yeah. when you're looking at, you know, the competitors in there, you have a current Mr. Olympia, you have a, you know, a, a guy who took off, uh, I guess, two years, Phil, who's a seven-time Mr. Olympia, who wants to get his title back. Uh, you have a Dexter Jackson. I, I wasn't sure. Is Sean Roden in this? Sean is not competing. He's not competing. Yeah. So you still have, you have three Mr. Olympias in this show. Three yeah. uh, it's pretty great. Um, this lineup in all divisions, but if you're talking about the Mr. Olympia, right, that to be able to have a guy, and it's funny because the thing that people aren't talking about as much as they probably should be is um, we have, I know you just mentioned Phil, but Phil isn't just trying to win his title back. Phil is trying to reach the, you know, the the rarest air in our sport, that eighth Sandow. He's trying to tie yeah. the, he's trying to tie the, um, the Ronnie Coleman, Lee Haney record and uh, if he's able to win, he will achieve that. Um, and I kept thinking about that. I kept thinking, you know, and who knows, if, you know, if Phil's going to win, if, you know, William Bonac's going to win, if Dexter's going to win, um, you know, Hadi Chupan's coming over from Iran. He's pretty formidable. Um, we have a really, really good lineup, big Rami's in the show. So this lineup is absolutely um, stacked. But uh, I kept thinking if Phil manages to come back after a couple years off and win this thing 
and tie the all-time record, what a shame it would have been to do that with no fans in the audience. Yeah. And um, so I kept thinking about moments like that. And uh, But you're right. This is a tremendous, tremendous lineup. Uh, the Bikini Olympia division has turned into a uh, something that's really become a, a high mark of the weekend. And, of course, the 212 division is, is something. And we just have uh, – I think J.M. Mannion was telling me the other day that there's there's three – um, former champions in each division, which is a really unique uh, dynamic. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool too. So yeah, we got, um, if you're a fan of bodybuilding, this is a really stacked lineup and a lot to talk about for sure. Well, what about the Miss Olympia? No, that, that's kind of like a, a really great thing to, I, you yeah. know, that I, I would, out of all of this, as far as my esteem for Jake goes, is number one on the list is doing that. Um, bringing back that title to me was, really really important because it was a title that never should have been lost it was it was a, a, a um, no less an important title for a female bodybuilder than the mr olympia is for, for a, a male bodybuilder and to have seen that go by the wayside was in my view tragic look so. there's a division for every kind of physique right and the miss olympia tradition is meaningful and i will tell you that the athletes in that division, the female bodybuilders, the more you get to know them, they are by far the most grateful athletes in our industry. You put on a female bodybuilding show and you talk to the athletes when the show's over and they're not talking about where they placed, you know, they're not complaining for the most part. They are just humble and grateful for the opportunity to compete because it was taken from them for a while. The, the Miss International in, in Columbus was, was canceled. The Miss Olympia was canceled and suddenly their sport was um, really on life support. And now that they're starting, thanks to Jake and his team at Wings of Strength, they've come back and they have started to have opportunities to compete. Every time a show is over, these athletes come up to me and Jake, and, and Jake deserves all the credit, um, and just expressing their gratitude and their humility for having the chance to to compete and do what they love to do. So I'm so happy for them that they're going to get a chance to, um, to compete. And um, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. It was a shame when it went away. And uh, now it's back, and uh, it's just another reason to uh, make sure you don't miss this year's event. <laughs> Very exciting. Now, what about the expo? Let's let's talk about that because that's got to be significantly impacted by. Yeah, all this. it is. So the full blown expo, for obvious reasons, is not going to happen this year. Um, we we did a modified um, sort of version of it. We're calling it our Olympia Fan Pavilion, or instead of having your typical four hundred thousand square feet of space with hundreds and hundreds of exhibitors which isn't viable this year because companies can't really do that. Um, we have uh, identified an opportunity where we have an, a nice centrally located area in the convention center, which will kind of serve as the main artery of the event. And um, we'll have about, you know, 30 to 40 um, core sponsors and exhibitors, brands that are, are close to what we do. And um, we will have them there along with a, a very robust merchandising um, component that we've developed here with our Olympia brand and our apparel line. So they'll be there. So it'll be sort of a, a modified, smaller version. Um, this year, certainly no one's expecting to have a full-blown, robust expo. It's just not practical. But we think we've created something that will provide value for the exhibitors and the sponsors and also, you know, opportunities for the fans to, um, you know, get as much as they can out of their visit to Olympia Weekend this year. So, so like, walk us through. What, what's – What's the protocol? I mean, we got you got to wear masks. You got to be like how far? Now, are you actually going to have? I mean, I can just imagine what this would have been like in Vegas. What a thirty-five thousand seat arena, and you you posting people in six foot intervals, and you end up with seven hundred and fifty out of thirty-five thousand. So, I, I mean, is that what we're? Is that is this the new normal that we have to have these cavernous, you know, hundreds of thousands of square feet to house, you know, thirty? So, the state of Florida is probably one of the more flexible areas on this standpoint but we're, we're not you know we don't want to confuse flexibility with a lack of commitment of being safe um face masks will be worn by guests and attendees um the athletes on the stage will not have to um but um there are many things that we will be doing to you know try to provide as safe an environment as possible if somebody feels like that it's not a comfortable environment um, for themselves. Um, certainly attendance is not required, but we are going to do everything we can to um, promote as safe an environment as we possibly can. But in this situation here in Florida, 
you're not going to see a lot of those cavernous empty spaces like you would see in, in other states. Um, I think you're going to see something a little bit closer to normal um, with just some um, revisions to provide a common sense approach to safety. But um, no, we're, um, we're fortunate. There's, there's formulas here that allow us to go to 50% capacity. Um, and that, those formulas are based on square footage here in this area. So that was what made this location so unique is that we were able to identify um, enough square, enough open square footage that yielded a, a formula, a calculation where 50% was able to allow us to honor the commitments we've made to our VIPs, to our uh, ticket holders, to our um, athlete plus ones and the guests and the media and the judges and the, all the various folks who come into town. So we were able to do that um, with this, with this cap. And uh, we think we found a, a, a sort of a nice sweet spot between being overly crowded, which we don't want to be, and also being unable to honor commitments to fans who are expecting right now to attend the Olympia. So um, we feel pretty good about where we're at. Beautiful. Are we going, Rich? I, I'm definitely. It's in Orlando. Um, I definitely want to go see it. It's where are you guys out these days? You're in the Carolinas, right, John? No, South Carolina. Yes, South Carolina. Rich, where are you? I'm, I'm in New Jersey. I'm still in New Jersey. Still in Jersey. Okay. Well, at least we're on your coast. We're in your time zone this year. So <laughs> yeah. Um, you, know, you know, there was a time, Rich, where I couldn't go to any event, amateur, pro, large or small, and not see you there. I always thought you had, you know. Uh, you you were a clone or something because wherever I would go, you always miraculously I appeared. And uh, I know I was in almost every show. I, I think I've I've accumulated yeah. more miles because I was not only in U.S. but all over the world. You know, between going to Middle East and you know Brazil or Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand. I've been everywhere, and you know I've done a lot of miles. And it's funny this whole COVID kind of changed things and. I'm now I'm I'm now more in a situation where I work, you know, remotely, and it's been working out okay. Well, I will say this, Rich. I know this is a business themed show. Um, I should have dressed more businessy instead of my. <laughs> I, look like, I look like a 16 year old. Um, but I will say that it's well documented what you've gone through the last few years, um, building one of the preeminent brands in our industry. Um, the name Gasperi. Um, I guess the ultimate evidence of how successful you've been with building your brand is that many of your customers probably don't even know um, that you were one of the best bodybuilders in the world at one time. Um, yes, so that speaks, that speaks volumes for how, the work that you and your team have done to turn the name Gasperi from a, from a name that we know in the bodybuilding world to a internationally recognized brand that speaks to people who are a part of the fitness movement around the world. But for those of us who have followed that journey, we know you've had um, all sorts of peaks and extraordinary success. And then you had to roll through some times that were a little bit more complicated and sort of tested the boundaries of, of the, the frustrations that we deal with in the world of commerce and business and acquisition and all those things that can be very difficult. And you've been through some spots where a lot of people would have quit and said, you know what? I'm going to sail off on my yacht and kind of go do other things. But you have been, you've been Rocky, you Rocky Balboa. You've been the guy who's taking punches and you keep getting up and you keep coming back. And the brand is, is still strong and it still has trust and your products are still great. And I just give you all the credit in the world for continuing to fight the good fight, because I think we all connect with that because there's always everybody out there, especially any of us who have done anything. And and your resume is, is, is extraordinary. And I will tell you that, you, um, you're an example because people are always trying to, you know, take us out, right? In different ways. They, there's, you know, we all wear targets. Some of us wear smaller targets. Some of us wear bigger targets, but in some, in some way, shape or form, everyone's a target, um, for someone. And, um, you have always managed to be very resilient. And, uh, and I think we can all learn a lot from, from what you've been able to do in the face of some really challenging situations. So uh, I don't want you to think for a second that that has gone unnoticed by those of us who have been watching. Uh, Dan, I really appreciate it. You know, it's, it's been, like you said, it's been an up and down, you know, battle. Uh, and what the one thing I believe in is never giving up and always grinding. And as long as you don't give up, you're, you're never a, a loser. You're always a winner. And, uh, situation you guys got right now that you, you've taken the situation and you've you know decided to go from you know instead of 
not having the show or moving it to Orlando and doing all the things you can to keep the show going is just to, <laughs> is just my thought on how I, you know, move forward and everything that I've been able to do. And, you know, like you said, continue in keeping this brand. The brand's been around for, it's a viable brand for 22 years. You know, we had our ups and downs and now the brand's uh, revitalized and it's coming back to life. Yeah. And it's been very exciting, even during this pandemic. So yeah. I thank you for noticing. <laughs> we all have. It's, it's it's almost a big three million pound pink elephant in the room. <laughs> hey, hey, Rich is still here, you know. <laughs> and I was saying, like, how can you get rid of this guy? I said, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> well, because like, even, even when people, sometimes I'll get these texts, especially in the last few days, where people they call me up or they'll shoot me notes. You know, Dan, I'm I'm, I'm so sorry for what you guys are going through. Or hang in there, bro. And almost like it's a level of empathy, and I appreciate it because it means that they care, and I love it. But my response is always, Are you kidding me? I live for this shit. Yeah. Like these are the moments. And I know everybody out there, because you have a lot of successful people who I know watch this show and um, everybody out there who has uh, enjoyed success or has achieved in some level. And um, they, they understand what it feels like to be cornered and to be in a spot that seems almost um, impossible to solve. And that's when you flip that switch and you get into that zone and you just tell everybody to get the fuck out of the way. And, <laughs> It's a really, it's a really, um, it's a really um, special place to be because it's the highest level of clarity and focus, and you have a great team and you execute. And I know, Rich, that's what you've done. Um, John, I know you've done that. I know you've been you've been met with some challenges along the way, and uh, the fact that we're still here talking about it, I I say I say it speaks volumes um, for um, the ability to kind of weather those storms. But uh, no, I just I, I really take great satisfaction when I am put in positions to try to navigate these situations because um, it's, it's, I know the Olympia means a lot to a lot of people and I take the job very seriously. And uh, I know when I go to the event every year and I hear what people say about the bucket list component of attending an Olympia and being a part of the Olympia experience and what it means, I know how significant that is for the athletes who are doing their first ever Olympia. Rich, I'm sure you remember that. That was about 94 years ago for you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we know that, um, you know, you talk to the athlete who makes the, to the Olympia for the first time. You talk to the fan who's attending their first Olympia or even their 30th in a row Olympia. And uh, they come over and they, they give you a hug and they're emotional and they talk about how much it means to be in that environment. And those moments really um, are what provide the fuel um, for when you find yourself in spots like the one we're in right now. Um, we have to figure out a way to make this happen so we can continue that tradition. And uh, so far, we, we think we're going to get there. You're, you're probably going to get a lot of uh, new first-time Olympia goers because you've moved across the country. Now, you know, locals in Florida or people who have gone to Orlando as a destination, you know, to go to Disney or MGM or whatever, or Universal, whatever it is, um, the, the, now they can take in the Olympia too, or just the people who live in Orlando is support people and uh, you know fans of bodybuilding can now enjoy the Olympia in their own backyard. So I think you're going to get uh, a, a new group of people coming in. I yeah. think the last time you, you guys were in Orlando is when I competed in 1991. Uh, <laughs> it was in Orla Orlando. That's you know, right. The, yeah. 91. Which means, Rich, that you have no choice but to return to Orlando next month. Definitely, definitely. I, uh, aren't, yeah. aren't you gonna, aren't, didn't you get approached to to do the MC uh, pay per view or something? Sh uh, Sean Sean contacted me to be able to do something for the pay per view, so I definitely want to come in and yeah. do that for the two twelve in the open. So there you go. Okay. I'll definitely yeah. be there. Yeah. So Dan, f f wrap it all up. The dates are the same. Where where, where is everything? Give us give us all the logistics. So the weekend, the Olympia week, we always call it Olympia weekend. It, we kicks off on December fifteenth. We'll have our amateur Olympia, which would have been the amateur Olympia Vegas, that is now the amateur Olympia Orlando, um, and then that will roll right into the rest of the week. Um, Olympia weekend per se, which of course kicks off on Thursday with the press conference, December seventeenth. That rolls right into our. Uh, our weekend activities with the Olympia finals and all that other good stuff. Um, it all takes place at the um, Orange County Convention Center. Um, you can go to MrOlympia.com and get all the details. We're trying to get everything, all the new information up as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and um, the links to purchase those tickets will be up in the next couple days. And uh, we also have a very favorable room block uh, at the Hyatt Regency Orlando 
for Olympia weekend. Um, so we hope to see as many people here as possible. And if you're not able to get here, that's cool. Check us out on pay-per-view and uh, take it in that way. But uh, if you're able to uh, get to this uh, part of the country, I think you'll, uh, you'll be in for a treat. It's going to be uh, a whole lot of fun. Sounds very exciting. And, and props to you and to Jake for your tireless, uh, unbelievably unending effort and commitment and passion to this because, uh, you know, it's it's instances like this that that make or break a situation and you know there's we've seen businesses go out of business we've seen sports be denigrated we've seen all kinds of things uh to 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 their to their detriment through this whole thing and it's really really refreshing to see a team like you have with jake at, at the helm to to pull this together and make this happen because you're all we've got and so it's the Olympia is or it's in your hands, man. And um, it, it's a treasure. And I'm so glad that it's in in, in uh, very able hands. It, you, you, it is in able hands. I have to say, you know, since Joe Weider, you know, you guys are I'm glad to see it. It's refreshing to see, you know, guys like you and, and Jake Wood, you know, taking that show because, I, you know, I remember the good old days, you know, with with uh, Joe and Ben and. You know, that's when he, you know, he, that was his baby. And sure. now it's, it's, you know, it's now into you, your guys' hands and you guys are taking it and, again, growing it and giving all the excitement to the new generation of people. Well, I appreciate you saying that. You know, not, not a day passes that we don't think about Joe and Ben and Betty and the whole, you know, Weeder family. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's something that I hope I never lose. I really want to stay connected to that because – um it's really a driving force behind what we do every day. And uh, I know you both had the chance to know Joe Weider. And, uh, you know, it's becoming less and less that we talk to people who did know those guys. And um, and it really is important to me to um, to stay close to that and to, and to remember why we're all doing this. But uh, I appreciate being on your show, guys. Can Continue the success. Um, congrats to everything you're doing uh, with the company, with the brand. And uh, I'll uh, I'll keep tabs on you guys on this show because it's a good one and it's important. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for being here and and uh, and giving us the exclusive. We're we're really uh, happy you've, you've uh, bestowed that honor upon us. For Thank sure. We'll, we'll see you guys in Orlando uh, next month. And uh, John, we'll have to get you doing some stuff for Muscle and Fitness pretty soon because we got to bring that we got to bring that edge back to the media. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be my honor. Let's do it. All right, guys. Cool. All right. Thank guys. you. Thanks. Bye.